If you work on cars for a living, you've probably taken this measurement at least a thousand times. Positive meter, lead of meter on the positive post of the battery, negative meter lead on the negative post, and you're not going to be too surprised when you get a measurement like the one here. But what if now I take the positive meter lead and put it on a body ground, like here, and I get a reading like this one. Now wait a minute. Negative meter lead is on the negative battery post. Positive meter lead is on a ground. How am I reading voltage? If you're asking yourself that question, you need to stick around and watch this edition of The Trainer. Hey, welcome back. To anyone who's familiar with voltage drop testing, that last reading I showed you is a big red flag saying that there's something wrong with the ground side on this vehicle. Uh, if to understand that though, there's some basics that you have to understand first. Let's start with building a basic circuit. Every electrical circuit has a source of electromotive potential. In our case, it's the vehicle battery. Every electrical circuit also has to have some sort of load, a component that we want to do something with, like an ignition coil, electric window motor, or a simple light bulb. To make the light bulb light, we have to have a path from the battery to the load and back again. But in a car, the ground side of the circuit uses either the chassis or the engine block as a conductor to simplify the wiring. So the complete path is still there, just not in a single strand of wire. Now the circuit wouldn't be of much use to us if we couldn't turn it on or off when we wanted, so we need a control device, a switch if you will, that opens and closes the path. This can be placed on either side of the circuit. Last, every circuit is protected on the positive side by a circuit protection device, a fusible link, a fuse, or a circuit breaker, and that is always on the positive side to protect the wiring. Let's explore that for a moment. Why is the circuit protection device always have to be on the positive side of the circuit when we all know that current flow is the same on either side of the circuit? Well, here's why. Because on the positive side of the circuit, current has not had a chance to flow through the load yet. And the load is the biggest single source of resistance that should be in the circuit. That's what regulates the amount of current flowing through the circuit. If we have a problem uh, with a short to ground before we get to the load, it's no different than uh, putting a piece of wire from one side of the battery post to the other. And as technicians, we all know what happens when you do that. We've probably accidentally arced across a wire a time or two in our careers. That strand of wire is going to melt down very quickly. So the circuit protection device is there to make sure that doesn't happen to any of the circuits that it protects on the positive side of that circuit. Write this down somewhere. Increasing resistance decreases current flow. And decreasing resistance increases current flow. And remember this, the only real source of resistance in a circuit is the load. Any other source is unwanted and will affect how the circuit works. That means that anything, anything that can go wrong with an electrical circuit can be traced to a change in resistance. Think about it for a moment. If I break a wire, that creates a huge change in resistance, doesn't it? Enough so that current will not flow. And if I change the resistance of the circuit where it's going straight to ground, a short to ground, isn't that a change in resistance as well? Here's another electrical 101 basic for you to remember. All voltage will be used to overcome the resistance in the circuit. That means if the load is supposed to be the only real source of resistance, and yes, I'm gonna fudge, there's a little bit of resistance in the wire and then the connectors and all that, that's a very minimal amount and really not worth discussion at this point. It's not going to affect the, the primary source of resistance and the overall current of the uh, current flow of the circuit. So if that load is supposed to be the primary reason for resistance in the circuit, I should measure near battery voltage on the positive side right at the load and measure almost nothing 
on the other side. Again, the voltage is being used in its entirety to overcome the resistance of the circuit. Let's try that out. Okay, here we have a simple circuit. A load, a source, and a path that connects the two. The bulb is obviously lit, we have a complete path, current is obviously flowing. So in a complete circuit, the voltage in the battery should be consumed by the load, which means I should measure battery voltage on the positive side, which we do, and next to nothing on the ground side. But what happens if there's an extra source of resistance? Well, let's find out. Okay, now in our second example, I've added a source of unwanted resistance. In this case, it's another light bulb. It's the same resistance as the first light bulb. But do I really care? No, this is strictly an example. And it's a good way for you to learn this in your own shop, building something similar to what you see here. The added resistance has now increased overall resistance. And what does that do to current flow? of course, drops it. That's why this load is burning dimmer than it did before. That's one indication, of course, there's a problem, but you're not going to see it on, on every electrical component, are you? What you are going to be able, though, is to measure the voltage present in the circuit at different spots. Now, remember what I said, all the voltage is going to be used to overcome the resistance in the circuit. If there's more than one, it's going to be split among them and split in proportion. I don't really care if you can do the math or not. That's not what I'm trying to get across here. What I'm trying to get across here is that if I'm expecting to see the voltage drop on the ground side drop to nothing or next to nothing, and I see this, almost half, that's a big red flag that there's a problem between here and here. How do I find it? Well, I keep moving down the circuit until my meter reading returns to what I would normally expect, almost zero. That tells me that I just passed the source of resistance and now I can work my way backward to where that uh, reading happens bad again. And just like a, a pitcher or a baseman throwing the ball back and forth to catch a runner, that's how you're going to isolate the cause, in this case, the, uh, the extra light bulb in the circuit. And that, my friends, is the heart of the voltage drop testing technique. If we know that voltage is supposed to drop once it crosses the load, the source of resistance that it's supposed to be feeding, and drop to nothing. If we see anything other than that, that's a big red flag that there's another source of resistance on the ground side of that circuit we have to find. Now let's go back and think about the measurements that I took at the very beginning of this video. When I put my meter leads between the negative post and the chassis ground, where was I measuring? The same as you see here, between the ground side of the load and the ground side of the battery. Now consider what's feeding on that chassis ground. There's a lot of circuits, aren't there? So as a troubleshooter, I'm going to be looking at what's between where I'm at and where the negative battery post is. In this case, it's going to be the cabling running from the body back to the battery. That's where I'm going to focus my, my uh, aim on. Uh, if there were something on an individual circuit, we'll look for the things that are unique to that circuit to help you isolate where to test. Uh, but this should give you a great start. Like I said, build this in your own shop, play with it. If you're not comfortable with voltage drop, you need to keep working at it until you are, because I'm telling you guys and gals, once you get this testing technique down pat and you're comfortable with it, you understand what the meter is trying to tell you, you're going to be solving electrical problems like you never saw before. In fact, you'll become the go-to person in your shop. That's all the time I got for this edition of The Trainer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next month. Hey, we hope that you found this video that you just watched helpful and informative. That's why we do them. But let us know what you think by adding your comments here below the video player. And if you did like it, how about a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you did like it, of course, you're not going to want to miss the next one. So while you're here, hit the subscribe button. That way you'll be among the first to know when new content is added. Thanks for watching. Motor Rage on YouTube.